I want to talk to you guys about graphs. So if you guys have ever had to draw a graph, which I'm assuming pretty much everyone's had to do, you've probably realized that doing it by hand can be a bit of a hassle, and there isn't really a easy way to do it that doesn't require you breaking out a ruler and trying to line everything up. So alternatively, you could use a program that actually generates the graph for you. And so some of these include uh, MATLAB, uh, GNU Plot is a really popular one. Another one would be Jupyter Notebooks that actually has that sort of stuff built in through a library in Python. The problem is, is that all those different programs don't really allow you to have an easy way to format your uh, graph after the fact. So say for example, you've got all your data, you create your graph and you put it in your file, well you're usually just putting an image in there. So the trade-off is the fact that as you're writing your file, you have to go and regenerate that graph if you wanna make a change to it. Which often can happen if say for example, you change the font you were using, and you had to put some text inside of it, so it'd be nice to have the font be consistent and generated with your graph. And so that's where this awesome program, Grap, comes into play. So Grap was originally created at Bell Labs by uh, Brian Kernigan and John Bentley. It is basically a preprocessor for PIC. Originally, PIC was intended to be used with trough, but now it can be used with tech and law tech as well, as long as you guys are using GPIC, which comes with Groff, or DPIC, which is another program. So the biggest thing that you're wondering is, why would I not just use something else? Well, the greatest thing about Grap is it allows you to draw really nice graphs of a bunch of different variety and change up the formatting of that graph without changing your data and without opening another program. You can change it right within your document. So here are just a few examples of graphs that you can create using Grap. So something I should also mention is that there are a few different versions of Grap. So the one I'll be using today is the one that comes from originally Plan 9. It's a, another operating system and it's been ported to Unix and other Linux systems and using a Plan 9 port. Another option exists outside of the Plan 9 Grap option, um, which I'd actually recommend if you guys are looking at using it because it allows a lot more extensibility and it's a lot more maintained uh, and a lot more focused on by uh, Ted Faber, Ted Fiber, I think is how you're supposed to say it, or Faber. Um, I'll put the link to it down in the description, um, as well as the Plan 9 option. Another option is Heirloom Grap, but I think Heirloom Grap is pretty much identical to the Plan 9 version. Don't quote me on that. Anyways guys, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, uh, you like content like this, you want to learn more about using the command line, you want to learn more about interesting programs that not a lot of people are talking about, then make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you guys will be notified of my next video and click thumbs up so you guys can like it. Let me know that you guys enjoy it. All right, without any more ado, let's get into it. So grab can be used as its own command line utility by using the command grab, and then its options. Let's look at its man page. So this is the man page for the plan nine version. So this is the plan nine man page. Um, we're just gonna look through it really quick. There's a lot of information in it and it can be a bit overwhelming, but the big thing is that grab doesn't really have a lot of options as a command line tool. In fact, instead it's meant to be used with trough and then passed into PIC. So most of the options is gonna be focused on PIC doing most of the work. So how you'd normally use it is you'd actually do, uh, so you'd have a file, so we'll go grab, and then we would have like file, or whatever the file would actually be, and then we would pipe that into PIC, and then we would pipe PIC into trough, and then we would have its preprocessor. But if you guys are using graph, you can actually do this a lot easier. You just do graph dash G, and then dash t p f or whatever version whatever you want to output as and then the file so it's a lot simpler if you guys have used pick where it's p or tbl where it's t or eqn where it's e anyways all these different preprocessors can be ran just as an option in graph let's start editing a file all right so here's just a file i've made ahead of time just to make this a bit easier for myself um, don't worry about these two lines this is just me basically sourcing some extra macos so that way you guys uh have some nice headings and everything, but we're not really gonna worry about those too much. And so for the first one, we're just gonna look at a really simple use case where I just give it a bunch of values in line and we'll see what that creates, just nice and simple. So the command we're gonna run is gonna be graph-k-g right here, is actually what I use to basically um, use grap in here. It calls grap and then dash s sources these macros 
dash ms gives us the macros that is actually used within these macros. I know it seems kind of silly. And then dash p tps makes it into a postscript file. And then finally, we have our actual file that we're running. And then we're going to output that into a postscript file. And that's what it outputs. So it puts basically in each spot. So we have a 54 here. This puts this up here at 54. And then it goes through one at a time and just basically goes one, two, three, four, five, six for each of them. Brings it down and up, and it automatically sets the scales. Now, obviously, this isn't ideal for everybody, which is one of the great things about Grap because it allows us to actually do more complex things. So that's just our simple use case. But now let's look at how we can actually uh, set coordinates. So how we do that is we actually is we actually do this. So this is our next one, coordinates, and we can go through and we'll see that there is one, two, three, four, five, and six. And this is actually setting our coordinates. So if we look at this graph and we look at the values, we'll see that at two, the value is three, all the way down here. And then one is 45, way up here. And then three is 65, way up here. And so now let's go on to the next one because sometimes these dots are useful, but it would be nice to be able to see the trend and see the line connecting everything. So how we do that is we actually use draw solid. Now we could do dash, I think is actually what we can use as well. Um, but let's look at solid first. So if we run that, and so you'll see that we have one solid line that connects all of them. Now we could do a dashed, I think is what it is. Oop. Now we compile that, and you'll see that we have dashed, and we could do, I think dotted is also an option. And there we go, so we get dotted as well. So you guys can use that as however you feel. So now, as nice as it is to be able to put our data in line, it would be nice if we had a lot of data to just put it in a separate file. And so let's talk about that. So next up, we can actually use external data, like I say up here. And so we use this command called copy, which actually copies these data from a separate file like we have here. We're using a file called temp.dat. If I go to it, this is basically all the data that's in here. It's all the same data that's in this uh, graph right now. So we should be able to see the same graph. So let's compile this and let's take a look at, so this is back to solid. This was the original one. Let's go to the next one and we'll see it looks the exact same. So we can actually use external files to store all of our data, which is really convenient because then we can change the formatting without having to worry about changing the actual file in itself. Now, next up, let's talk about labels. So it's nice to have this, but it'd be easy, better to be able to identify um, what everything is. So I have a label for the left side and a label for the bottom. And so this is actually where labels come in. And so we can actually do them really simply. We just do label left and give it information to put there. So I did time in seconds. And then label for the bottom is misspells when typing. Uh, this is just kind of random titles that I put in there because I thought it was funny. And then we're just doing a solid line, like I said before. And then we're using that same temporary file. Now, if we compile it again and take a look at that spot, here's our little labels that we have right there, very nice, as you guys could guess. So while labels are great, we probably wanna be able to actually change this frame here and how that looks. And so that's really actually very simple. We actually use the frame command for that. So let's take a look at it. So looking at the frame command, it's actually really simple. We can give it a height and a width, which will actually change the height and the width. So if we compile that, so now we can use the frame to adjust it. So we have a height and a width and we can actually change the height. So let's increase the height. And then we see that it's much taller which may not be great, but say we wanted to make it shorter and a lot wider, here's how we could do that. And then when it compiles, you'll see that we get a nice wide one. Now, while this is nice, it would be nice to be able to remove certain parts of it. And so that's where we use other parts of frame. So here we actually say in viz, which makes the whole frame invisible. Then we are setting its height and its width. And then we can actually say we want the left side to be solid and the bottom to be solid. And we look and we'll see that the left is solid and the bottom is solid, but the top and right are gone. And so if we actually remove this, actually see that it makes everything invisible. So that's why we basically say left solid, bottom solid. We could even remove the left side by just doing something like this and it removes the left side. Now that's pretty neat, but we can actually do a bit more with that and just have no frame. And we can even add a grid. Um, so usually when you draw uh, graphs by hand, you usually have a grid and that's where you're pinpointing everything. You're usually not going to do it freehand using a ruler. If you are, I feel very sorry for you. But if you aren't having to do that, then it'd be nice sometimes to have a grid to make it a bit easier to line everything up by. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So here, right here is where I set a vertical grid and we're doing zero to seven by one. So this means every value of one we're going to add an extra grid line and from zero to seven is where that grid will be. And then the same thing goes for this one. We're drawing a grid from left to right. So making a horizontal line from zero to 70. So that means that it's making it zero to 70 
and it's uh, basically doing it every five. So let's take a look at it and we will see what that looks like. And so here is our actual grid. So we're going zero to 70, making horizontal lines and going up by five, as you can see. You can do the same thing with the other one here, zero to seven, going up by one. And so I'm using dotted here, but we could like before I use dash, and when it compiles, we'll see that we get dashes. Um, I find dots are a bit easier to see without intersecting with uh, the lines. But anyways, you guys can do your own sort of thing. Try this stuff out, fiddle with it a bit, see how it works. So now we can also set the actual coordinates for everything. So here I've got my labels. Um, actually, let's just remove those to make this a bit simpler. And so here I'm saying chord X goes from zero to 11 and chord Y goes from zero to 70. You'll we'll see that it actually goes uh, the X goes from 0 to 11, and the Y goes from 0 to 70. Now this is actually just setting the boundaries. It's not actually setting specific ticks and where they should be. That's when you would use grid, or you can even use a separate command called tick, which I recommend you look at the manual for. I'm not really going to go into that too much today. So on top of that, you can actually add special markings. So say like you want an X in one spot, you want to add some text to it. Maybe say like here is where we were expecting things to be and all that sort of stuff. And so, so this may look a bit complex, but once you see how everything works, it'll make a bit more sense. So this should make this full screen and a bit bigger and then compile it. And then so here we get uh, times at above at five comma six. And basically what I'm saying is put this text times above this location. And then here I'm putting times, which is just an X at this location. And then bullet above this location, bullet at this location, puts a bullet there. And so here's a circle. So now we can actually look at this and it'll make a bit more sense. Let's just remove these comments to make it a bit clearer. All right, so now we'll actually see, oh, circle is above this location and we made a circle at that location. And then bullet is at this location and we put the text bullet above it. And we have a V tick, like a line right here. We put the text above it and times, like this little X right here is above times. So pretty simple. Um, this may seem a bit confusing, but take a look at this file that I'll put in the description and try it out and try and mix around and see how it works out for you. Finally, we're going to look at one of my favorite parts of Grap, which is allowing you to format your data in special ways. So first off, we're going to use this command called copy through, which basically allows us to take what we were doing before with copy, where we were getting information from a separate file, but now we can actually put it through some special formatting. So this is really neat. So the first one we're gonna look at is actually a bar graph. Basically what we're making is just a bar graph. And so one of the really neat things about it is that all I'm really doing is just drawing lines, making rectangles to draw all this special stuff. And so the way that copy through actually works is we just do copy the file, but instead of that being the end of our command, we actually do through and then we give it information and then basically it takes its input. So it's one, so its first value will be like its x value normally, and then its next one would be its y value. And so using that, we actually generate rectangles using that to put in our bar graph, which is really neat. And so next, let's look at this dotted graph or dotted line graph. So you'll kind of see how it looks. And so here's how it turns out. And this one's also very simple. We're basically just drawing a dotted line and then cutting it a bit short. And then we're actually just drawing a bullet at the end to locate each of the spots. And finally, let's look at another really simple, really interesting use case where we're actually drawing a uh, box plot. And so here's our really simple box plot. I'm not really gonna go into this. This is actually taken from one of the man pages, but if we zoom out a bit, it is a bit complex. So this does take some extra work, format it a bit more. You can actually automatically generate all this stuff. And then once you've done it once, you don't have to do it again. And if you wanna change formatting, you can just do it within your file. So we could actually change the font for this just by doing dot fam and then we're just going to do cm and then when i run that it actually changes the font that it uses in these parts which is pretty neat so you guys can automatically change this stuff as you change your file which is really cool you don't have to worry about inconsistencies in fonts you don't have to worry about the bolds looking different the font size is looking strange you can change all of this yourself anyways guys this is just an overview if you guys enjoyed this make sure to subscribe make sure to like and hit that bell icon so you guys will be notified of my next video Thanks, see you next time.